Nasha Park. Y'all hear me? Y'all hear me? One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Test, test. One, two, one, two. One, two. I'm Captain of 13,000 House Fire. Um, real quick about me, and this work ain't about me, but it's about Most High in Christ. Hey, that's what the ISUPK is for. To help bring the 12 tribes together, you know what I'm saying? Because we're lost in the world. And a lot of us don't know um, things about us, especially those of us that come from the Caribbean. Um, started out of one West, right, from 90 something. And here I am still to this day, you know what I'm saying? Um, because I love the truth. And if you are, you know, if you're in the right space, you want to love the truth too. And I see a lot of brothers that came in and love the truth so much so that they go out and teach to wake up the nation. So I'm gonna leave it at that. Now, this lecture, um, when I was asked to do it, I wanted to talk about what we were doing as natives in the Caribbean. Because a lot, there's not too much information, or at least they don't put it out there like the way it should be put out. But what it is being put out is because of things that they're finding out recently. Once upon a time, they said that everybody in the Caribbean was Taino. Later on, they found out that that's not true, that there were actually three three brothers in the Caribbean. You had the Guatanabe, which be the native of what is now Cuba, it used to be called Cubacan, right? They used to live in the western region of Cuba. You had the Sibone, which were like the majority, and the second majority were the Taino. Now the Tainos was, was split up into um, four groups. You had the Western Taino, you had the Eastern Taino, and you had the, um, the classic Taino. The classic Tainos were mainly here, and then the island that they call now the Dominican Republic and Haiti. Once upon a time, it used to be called Haiti or Kiskeya. I, um, Kiskeya means, um, um, excuse me, Haiti means high mountains. Kiskeya means beautiful. All right? I don't know if you ever heard some Dominicans just, just shout out Kiskeya La Bella because it's ancestral, you know what I'm saying? Um, whereas the island of Puerto Rico at one time, a lot of people don't know this, was called San Salvador. That name was given to him by Colum, uh, Columbus. We, the natives, used to call it Boriquen, which meant land of the great and noble and prudent Lord. You know what I'm saying? So those of us, um, you know, throughout history, we thought, well, okay, fine. Here, here they are, the Caribs uh, was another group, right? They dwelt here. The Caribs also dwelt, um, they, they, this is what they say, that the Guatanabe and the Carib or Kalinango are the same people. These people came in just prior to when Columbus came in to the Caribbean. A lot of people don't know that either. The problem is because of the Spaniard, because of colonization, and a lot of brothers and sisters here in the mainland can also identify this. There's a lot of records that have been destroyed. There are a lot of records of our people that have been destroyed throughout what they call the New World. Okay, So they don't really have much to go on as far as the Guatanabe, with the exception of they were hunter-gatherers. Now the hardcore Kalinangos, the Spanish, you know, had a hard time with them because they were, they were fighters. Here's another thing that they didn't tell us. That besides the Sibone and the Guatanabe, the Taino and the Cali, uh, Kalinango, aka the Carib Indian, there were other groups of people here. If I could, um, if, you, if you could, I want you to slide. Slide a bit further down and go to where he says um, sal Salinoid. And then we'll, go, we'll come back and just slide down until you want to stop. Bubble shot. Stop right there. Let me, let, me, let me show the names, right? So once upon a time, even Jamaica um, was part of the Western uh, Dainos, right? Was pronounced Jamaica or Ham uh, Hamaka, right? And, and you're, I already told you about Kiskeya. So according to the... Um, research and this I found out when I was living in Puerto Rico a lot of us be, ha, have, our, have our beginnings and some of y'all might notice because Katas I brought it out have our beginnings in South America and then we migrated up they're saying though that this region with the Gu Guatanabe they migrated from here that way they came up and they migrated from Mexico that region into Cuba okay go, go down for a second 
<sighs> I'll get back to this as soon as um, um, you got to keep going down. I'll tell you when to start. And I'll, and I'll tell you the relationship with that Edomite right there. Keep going. Keep going. I'll get to all this. Keep going. It should be coming up soon. Keep going. Right there. So the Solenoid culture was a, a, a group of indigenous who came up from South America to inhabit the Caribbean. Okay? Um, the ter in present-day Venezuela and the Caribbean. So, and these things you can find on Wikipedia. They have all the, um, um, the references. You know, so it says here that um, uh, the Salaroy culture is a pre-Columbian indigenous culture of, ter uh, culture, culture of territory in present-day Venezuela and the Caribbean that flourished from 500 B.C. to 545 B.C. Now, understand this. There are some dates, according to the historians and archaeologists, they, they go extreme with it, all right? They're so, they sometimes put us, down, put us back to 10,000 years, 12,000 years so on and so forth, which is ridiculous. Because if you go biblical, the earth is not that old. All right? A lot of people think because they hear Esau say, 1 million B.C., the earth is not even 1 million B.C. All right? If you want a, a guesstimation number, if you do biblically, the earth is about 13,000, maybe a little bit over than that. But even, even still, 13,000 years is a lot. You know what I'm saying? Hey, 80 years, ain't, ain't it a lifetime? So imagine 13,000. They feel like it's a million years. But anyway, says the satelloid were an Arawak people. Let me break, let me make y'all understand that. When they said that we were Arawak people, it means it was a tongue uh, uh, that we spoke. Their unique and highly decorated pottery has enabled archaeologists to recognize their sites and to determine the places of origin. Satelloid ceramics included zoomorphic effigy vessels, okay? These effigy vessels in the Caribbean, we would call them semis, and I'll get to that later on, okay? Um, but let me tell you something about the semis were either um, used for in two places. They were either idols or somebody of your ancest ancestry um, lineage, all right? Which we, we would deify. I'll get to that afterwards. Okay, so um, incense burners, platters, trays, jars, bowls with straps, handles, and bell-shaped containers. The red pottery was painted with white, orange, and black slips. Distinctive satellite artifacts are stone pendants shaped like raptors from South America. Uh, if you could slide on just a little bit to get this portion. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, okay, there's that right there. These were made from a range of exotic materials, including such as car car um, carnelian, tor uh, turquoise, lapis lazuli, a a amethyst, crystals, quartz, jasper, um, caldony, and fossilized wood. These were traded through the Great and Lesser Antilles and South American mainland until the 600 CE, which means current era, okay? N now, if you can go to the next slide, all right? So, the Salinois displaced this group of, of indigenous people, all right? The Esau um, labeled them the um, Arteroi people with the second wave, and there was another group of people before them. Like the Salinois took them out, they took another group out. At the end of it, just right before Columbus, the Kalinango took the Taino out, okay? Pushed us uh, further up into the um, Puerto Rico, to Cuba, to Jamaica, to uh, um, um, the Bahamas, and, and even parts of the state of Florida. That, that region that's Tampa used to be called um, Bimini. All right, the, uh, the Arturoi people were a second wave of human settlers of the Caribbean who m began to migrate into the Antilles around 2000 BC. See, my, remember I told you about the dates, right? 2000 BC, well 2000 BC would have put us well, in the era of Christ, right? So we was already over here, all right? Um, and, and, you know, we, can't hear? Okay. All right. So, Second Kings in the whole Assyrian Empire, um, we can go into that. Um, they, they were preceded by the, this was the other people, right? They came before the Arturoi people, the Casmiroid peoples, right? 4,000, um, 4,190 to 2,165 B.C. That's a, that's a problem right there because at this time, where were we? 
Anybody know? Go ahead. No. We were in captivity in Egypt around this time. The 2000 before, right? If you count back, we was in Egypt. All right? So that's why these, these days, take it with a grain of salt. All right? Uh, they are believed to have, uh, have, have originated over, over, over Norco Valley in the South America, migrating to the Antilles from Trinidad, Tobago, to Puerto Rico. The name Arturoi comes from the Arturo a shell mid in sight in southeast Trinidad. All right? So let me see if, if there's any more. Okay. Uh, Okay, um, I'm not, I have this there, but I'm not even going to get into that uh, much. Let's go back up. Because my point is to talk about what we did, but I wanted to uh, talk bad about the gods we served. All right, that's what I want to do. You know what I'm saying? Because us natives, we had a problem. The problem was we started doing what we did in the Assyrian Empire. And a lot of natives, Boricuas and them, you start talking about our ancestral roots, <laughs> there's problems. I'm down for that. <laughs> I'm down for it. So go, go back up. You know what I'm saying? If you go back up to that map, all right? And we're going to cover all these things right here. No, go, go a, bit, a little bit further up. To the back to the map, okay. Get this little portion here. Just so that way people would follow me, right? So this account is of the Taino of the Caribbean, lived prior to the arrival of Columbus. Some of the practices of life within the Taino community, foods were, was, that was hunted, and deities that were um, worshipped or revered, right? A lot of um, Boricuas, right? We say, hey, soy Boricua, para que tú lo sepa, right? Like, I'm Boricua, so you know, right? But a lot of us don't even know what the word mean. You, are, you know, like, ask a Puerto Rican, what race are you? Have you ever, have, you, have anybody ever done that? What, what was the answer they gave you? Uh, right? So well, what race is that? You see, you, see, you see that we have a problem too. It ain't just the black man. It's also the Latino. You know what I'm saying? And that's not even a title, but I'll use that just for general purposes. Because the, the, like we go into the term Latino, I'll even show you that, but that's not today. Right? But anyway... The word, as I said earlier, means the great and, and the great and prudent, um, noble lord. Boricuas is a, um, the great and prudent, noble lords, which was the people of the land, right? Um, was the name of the island prior to the European invasion and colonization? Ne who's on? Oh, next slide. We can get to the next slide. Anybody got a question right now? You know, based off of what I've already went over. Go ahead. Uh, okay, right, so let me, let me, let me understand that we are, as a people in the island of Boringen, we call ourselves Boricua, all right? Every region, like for instance, if you was in the Bahamas, them Tainos, they were called, they were called Lucano, right? If you went to the, to the Les Antilles, they would call themselves Calingo. The white man called them Caribe or Caribbean, which was a bastardized word for um, um, cannibal, you know what I'm saying? Um, but t today, 2022, ask most Puerto Ricans, what race are you? You'll get this answer. I'm Puerto Rican. You, you ever heard that? Right? Well, what's, that, what's that? What's that? Before the truth, what you call yourself? Because that's what I did. I call myself Puerto Rican. Right. Right. But, but, but as, a, as a people, right? Like you would say, well, my father's from Puerto Rico, right? So that when you start digging into that, you know, we don't really give you a straight answer. Puerto Rican is the, is the word we come up with, or Boricua. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, where's, where's the brother Was this the slide next, after the map? After the map? Okay. So, let me talk to you about this guy and why I picked him. Versus Bartolome de la Casa. And Bartolome de la Casa is a good reference if you want to see the atrocities, detailed atrocities that happened in the Caribbean. To the I'm going to use what Donald Trump says. To the likes of which you, you have nightmares, okay? Just for not coming up with gold. 
Like fam, like you, you would have your child. If you were pregnant, the Spaniards would use spears to rip them child out of your stomach while you was alive and let you see it and feed that child to the dogs. And then after that, they'll pluck your eyes out and so on and so forth. But like we can, I can go into that. That might be another subject, right? But today I'm talking about this guy here, Fray Iñago, right? I forgot the Enya, but it's, it's um, Iñago Abad y la, la, la Sierra, right? He was a Catholic priest, right? Came with Columbus. So he was, him and another priest uh, was in charge of detailing how we were behaving, okay? The things we were doing and so on and so forth. Let me get the next slide. All right. So one of the things he observed about Ephraim was our skin color, right? There are certain books that were called they themselves called us Negroes, all right? Um, but they said that we were of copper brown skin and some sometimes even um, a yellowish brown, like uh, almost like a pale, right? When I read that, I just thought of uh, of um, Hosea the seventh chapter. You know what I'm saying? But keep going. Get to these words right here. So there we go. There it is. Right, the colors of the Indians of Puerto Rico was a copper color known to the average, known to the Aborigines of America, though they were of a of a sat of a sallow. Right, and this is what it means: a person's face or complexion of an unhealthy yellow or pale brown color, and somewhat darker complexion. They were shorter in stature than the Spaniard, stout, well proportioned. They had flat noses with wide nostrils. Nostrils. Bad teeth, narrow foreheads. And he's going to tell you why we had the narrow foreheads as I read along. They, their heads were flat both in front and at the back because, and the, the author referring to um, Iñago, okay, the fray, the, the fray. Um, they, they were pressed into this shape at the time of birth. They had long, thin, coarse hair, and according to Fray Iñago, they were without hair on their face or the other parts of their body. So we weren't hairy people. All right? Let me get the next slide, Baba Kusha. Um, let, me, let me, if I could, right, just real fast, because I got to remember, right? I'll keep doing it in English. But anyway, go, go back up real quick. I got to do a quick translation. So, esto es cuando, antes que, su, antes que vino Colón a la América. Esta mapa, hold on, stop at the map real quick. Go back to the map. Up before this, right? Ahí. So, in the region del Caribe, right? Estos son los nombres de la isla antes de que llegó Colón. Por ejemplo, esta, esta área donde hoy se llama Tampa, antes se llamaba Bimini, Bahamas se, se llamaba Lucayo. La gente que vivía en ahí se llamaban Lu, 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 um, Lu, Lucayo, Lu, Lucayo también por el mismo nombre. Simplemente significa gente de, de las islas, ok? Borinquen. Y, y, y la, eh, del gran y prudente noble señor, obviamente Haití, Quisqueya, right? Mont montaña alta, Quisqueya significa la bella. Cuba, antes se llamaba Cubacán. Achicaron el nombre y lo dejaron eh, con el nombre Cuba, pero antes se llamaba Cubacán. Ama Amaica se llamaba a veces, dependiendo, uh, Yamayé o, o Jamaica, hoy se llama Jamaica. El, el región, and I gotta say this right, the region of the Caribbean was also, um, okay, in South America you had um, um, Suriname, you had um, Guyana and French Guyana. That region is considered, along with the Lower Antilles and Belize, part of the Caribbean region, okay? And the region was determined about, uh, uh, not just by the people, but by culture and, po and political position. We good? All right. So, so esta región, incluyendo Guyana, este, este, Guyana de, de, de Francia, también el país de, de Belice y Suriname, todo, todo eso era parte de la región caribeña. Anybody knows why the, the Caribbean was named the Caribbean region? Anybody want to take a crack at it? Go ahead, Kazak. Nobody? Okay. It was called the Caribbean because of the Kalingo. The Kalingo. 
All right, the, the whole region was named because of these people, the Kalilingo. Because why? Because of their warlike spirit. They, they, they were like straight up fighters. They didn't care about the Spaniards. Hey, they used to even take um, Tainos and Sibune, um as, as uh, the wives as slaves, you know, to marry them and fight us off. Our fault, talking about the Tainos, we one time sided with the Spaniards to take on the, 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 the Caribs. We learned not to do that afterwards, you know. Then eventually we sided with the Caribs to fight the Spaniard. But we saw the real demon after that in the Spaniard. Anyway, um, can you bring it down one? To like you? I'm going to translate the next um, portion into Spanish. So, este cuento, right, stop it there. Este cuento, vamos a hablar de, de, de los Tainos que vivían en la región este, Caribe antes que llegó Colón. La práctica entre la gente de, de su comunidad, comida que comían, lo que cazaban y los dioses que, que uno alababa. Ok, la palabra borín que significa tierra del gran y prudente señor noble. Let's get the next slide. Ok. Y el sacerdote se llamaba Fray Iñago Abad y la cierre. Ok. Continue. Y por la razón que estoy utilizando este porque yo pude utilizar a Bartolomé de la Casa, pero lo que pasa es que el cuento o los lo detalles que Bartolomé de la Casa escribía en su libro era de la tragedia um, hacia los taínos. Um, Abad, o, o Iñigo Abad, describía la costumbre y todo eso. Um, go down one more to the words. No, antes. Go, go on one. Just right under the, what you see, the, the, right under here, there's some words there. All right. So, dice que el color de los indios en Puerto Rico era de un color cobre, conocido entre los aborinales de, de, de América. Ellos eran de un complejo amarillo, brown, o más oscuro. Eran achicados en la estatura en comparado con de los españoles. ¿verdad? Pero eran buenos, buen proporcionados. Tenían narices este, aplastadas, pero lo, los rostros de sus narices eran anchos. Dientes malos. Y, y la cabeza decía que eran aplastados. Y la razón era porque desde que nacieron, nacieron un bebé, um, tenían un, este, un sistema donde aplastaban la cabeza de los niños. Um, next slide, Babucuchá. Marriages with sister-in-laws were permitted if they were childless. That's also scripture. Like we did these practices because we are the people of the Bible. You know what I'm saying? Of course, not keeping the law and statutes and commandments, we did lost our ways. That's, that's true, right? So widow, um, uh, we're childless widows. Wives were discarded for help, um, dis discarded for new help, help meets. They also sacrificed first fruits on high mountains and on the shady trees. They had temples and carried a holy ark, like, like the, the Ark of the Covenant, all right? And I'm going to show you all that later on. We had our own version of the Ark of the Covenant. This is some information that a lot of us Boricuas or people in the Caribbean don't, don't even know that we used to do. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, leave it right there, right? El lenguaje de los indios en español a Cuba, Jamaica y la isla, las islas. Eh, eh, con, eh, con, eh, 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 hablando del autor, eh, contende que te, te, tenían este, muchas este, semejanzas a hebreo. Él también um, llamó, lo llamó como un hebreo corrupto, ¿verdad? Asumiendo su, los nombres Cuba y Haití, que eran hebreos y que se aplicaba primero en los um, caciques de antigüedad. Right? Um, let me see. Um, so, descubrieron y la gente de la isla, el nombre de los ríos y de personas en uso entre los nativos eh, eran de, divididos del hebreo. Por ejemplo, Ainab, del de hebreo Ain, que significa este, corriente, ¿verdad? Yones de Jona, Yaque de Acó, Ure de Urayas, Siba de Siba, y Maisi de... Slide on a little bit. 
de Moisés. Nombres de las herramientas, um, su, su pequeña, este, era un barcocito, ¿verdad? Canoa, ¿verdad? Lo llamaban Oca, Ocanza, ¿verdad? El ají, para el picante, coge, ¿verdad? Nombre de los, de los almacenes para maíz y grano, ¿verdad? Y todo semejanza. Todo apunta al lenguaje hebreo, ¿verdad? Su derecho y ceremonias. También de su lenguaje forman un mayor argumento en favor de esta teor teoría de descendencia. Circuncisión pre prevalía entre los indios, okay. se bañaban de cada rato en los ríos, keep going. ¿Verdad? Y, 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 um, nosotros en, en, en Puerto Rico llamamos esta palabra charcos, ¿ok? Ellos, ellos se alejaban de lo, que lo, las cosas que ya estaban muertos, no comían de sangre, ellos tenían sus días de ayunas, cuando se casaban podían casarse con su, su llena siempre y cuando que no hubo un hijo, ¿ok? También se, eh, tomaban esposa como ayudantes, um, ellos sacrificaban los primeros frutos en montas, montañas altas y en, y en bajo la sombra de los palos, de los, de los árboles. Ellos tenían templo y, y cargaban un arco santa. Now go to the next one. Ok. Stop right there. Pues cargaban un arco santa antes que ellos iban a guerrear. Ellos también, como los diez tribus, in, 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 inclin, in, eh, inclinen a ídolos, ¿ok? Todos los escritores y, y viajeros estaban de acuerdo, ¿ok? So, entonces, está, lo que está diciendo es que entre ellos, ellos estaban de acuerdo, que había muchos tipos de, entre los judíos, ¿verdad? De, 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 de la costumbre de judíos entre los aboriginales de América. Indians, the Aborigines of America. Okay. Uh, so next slide. So even people that studied us, um, seeing the customs uh, that we that we carry. Okay. Now this is in Spanish, right? It says los indios de la India islas son hebreos. What it says is that the Indians in the Indian Highlands, which is the Greater and, and Lower Antilles, and in the Caribbean, are Hebrews, right? Los indios de las Indias Islas, que es tierra firme del mal océano, que son el presente de señorio de la corona de estos reinos de Castilla, de Castilla, son hebreos, de gente de los dos, de los, de los diez tribus de Israel. Que Salmán, rey de los asilos, captivó y transmigró en Asia en tiempo del rey Ezequiel. So what this is saying is that They were confirming that the Indians within the um, the islands in the Caribbean were the Hebrews, right? And they and they, based off of, of their research, they knew they said that these were the ten tribes of Israel that Solomon asked. And when you go to the uh, Second Kings and also in the Book of Ezra, it talks about us, right? Uh, when we was in the captivity under the Assyrians, and they he trans transmigrated us into the Asia during the time of the king. Um, no puede haber 2200 años poco o más o menos que fueron llevados captivos en Asiria. So right here what he said was about 2200 years more or less we were put into captivity. Then this was prior to this um, time frame, right? 2000 years before that. So obviously They even give you a, a more or less time frame. So whatever the archaeologists are saying these days, 
don't line up with that thing. Okay. Okay. Entonces, entonces prueba por cinco razones. La primera por razón de la habitación, el sitio de la parte del mundo donde se ha, se haya, que mora, eh, habitan. Esta segunda de una autoridad de Ezra. Right? So the, the first reason, the habitation or place of the part of the world where this happened and where they work or live, right? This was found. This was founded. Uh, on, the, on, the, uh, on the authority in Ezra. So he, they even made reference to the book of Ezra, okay? Donde dice que estos diez tribus de Israel se fueron de allí, de Asiria, más adelante, muy lejos, en un región de parte despoblada de gente que nunca había sido habitada. So basically, this is what what it says in, in somebody pulled that in the uh, second Ezra, was it the 14th chapter? Because in this history book, right? He even quotes that 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 um that scripture. Alright? Basically you have to you probably get to. Basically what he's saying is that just like how it said in the book of Ezra, how we went to a land where no man dwelt. And that's the thing, when Esau is telling everybody. There were people here before, before the natives, and that's not true. There were nobody here, right? We were the first inhabitants in this land, right? So whenever you see on the History Channel, talk about natives, take that with a grain of salt, because some of it could be true, some of it could be false, but I know the scripture. The scripture said, if any man speaketh, let him speak as the oracles of God, Second Peter 4, chapter 11, all right? So that's our first point of reference, the Bible. Then, like the Bible says, the earth shall help the woman. Then after you do the research in the Bible, then you go do look for archaeology. You know, research. And don't always go, because a lot of people make that mistake too, they surface, surface research. Don't ever do that. Keep researching until, until you get to a point where you're just like, okay, this is it. Right? These things that we're going over have been researched for a very long time. Right, so anyway, as he gets that on the okay, you got it? All right, so Tom said, he said, un león de, de una región o en parte de poblada de gente que nunca había sido habitada, camino del, del año en medio, right? So he said it took about a year and a half, just like how the scripture said. Pues caminando de Asiria, desde ciudad de Nínive, donde estaba Tobías, he's talking about in the city of Nineveh, where Tobias was at, right? Que fue de aquella transmigración de gente o lo demás de su nación caminando hacia la la parte oriente, porque a la parte del occidente, occidente no caminaron porque bloquearon otra vez, right? Volvieron otra vez a tierra de promisión. So we're saying that. Um, from the Nineveh, right? It, it, from that region on, they went to the, to the east and then to the west. They, they ended up um, getting, falling back into where they started. So obviously it took a little bit longer, year and a half of what the scripture says. Can you scroll down? A la parte de Septentreo o Norte no pudieron caminar tan largo camino ni a la parte de mediodía de mediodía sacando los sábados en Pascuas que no caminaron los hebreos. So we say that there were travels that we were traveling, but there were certain times where we wanted the Sabbath and also the Passover, right? Que no caminaron los hebreos, andó a cada jornada 20 millas como, como los derechos disponen y siete ligas que es una milla. All right, so we're gonna skip that. So basically, the author just referencing what what what, what um what is in the apocalypse. So you start slide it up. Right, we trust on this. Right, these people right here. Right, it, it, it just goes into how we started in the Orinoco in the Orinoco River. We migrated upwards. Right, there were uh, other groups. Right, we were uh, the Salinois, which was displaced by the Taínos. 
¿verdad? La, la gente sale, saloide, que fueron desplazados de los taínos, and, be, and then, um, prior to that, they displaced the, uh, uh, keep going, we should, we should, uh, for sure. They displaced the, the Orteroid people, right? Keep going, we, we talked about that part already, all right? So, just real quick, I'm just gonna read a few plans, no, I'm just gonna read a little bit. The Orteroid are believed to have developed in South America before moving to the West Indies. There it is, radiocarbon date, where well, Orteroid is 5,230 BCE from Trinidad. Radiocarbon dating is not an exact science. It's right. just like DNA. Right. Right? DNA only works for now. Who's the father? If you don't believe that that's how it is, then go ask Maury Povich. She'll tell you who your father right. is. Right. Just straight up and down. Right. Carbon dating is not an accurate science. You yeah, Yeah, read, 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 read it away quick so that way you'll know that when I read in Spanish, this was the reference that that person, the author of that book, got it to. Right? And this is beautiful that I see black and brown faces all together. That's right. It's a beautiful thing. Because what I'm seeing is the family coming together. That's right. You understand? Yes, we 12 tribes, but we're one family. We're the nation of Israel, right? That's and it right. should always be that way. That's right, right. Yeah. And that's why this weekend is happening. You know what I'm saying? What's it going on? Black and brown unity, right? right. All day. All day. Go ahead. Second Ezra, chapter 13, uh -huh. verse 4. Uh -huh. Those are the ten tribes mm -hmm. which were carried away Christmas mm -hmm. out, of the, out of their own land uh -huh. in the time of... Stop right there, so you understand our own land was the land of Israel. The, 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 the land was divided in two after King, King Solomon died. Okay? You had in the north, you had what they called the Latinos and North American and Seminole Indians. And then you had in the south they, what they called the so-called Negroes, West Indians and Haitians in the south, the kingdom of Judah, the kingdom of Israel. But of course, what did us so-called indigenous do? We started serving other gods. You know what I'm saying? We started serving other gods. The Lord sent the Assyrians and put us in captivity. Replaced us with Ethiopians in our own land. They called people of Kush. If you don't believe that the Ethiopians, the Somalians, the Kenyans, our Kush go have a conversation with them. Go have a conversation. I have. Matter of fact, even recently, I even spoke to a woman of Persia, East Indian. And in their culture, to this day, they teach that the black people in America, the Latino, are the Hebrews. Today, 2022. So she said, we know. She told me just like that. I know because that's what they do, that's what they taught us. You know? But church here, they ain't teaching us that. At Israel Street University Practical Knowledge is where you heard that. And, and guess what? That brought us together. So these names, you can actually go back to 2 Kings, the 17th chapter. They give you the rundown of what, what was going on there, including when um, these um, Ethiopians, let me, I'm going to say that so that way you put a picture, right, to who I'm talking about, right? They even tried to keep our practices, but the Lord won't have it. They kept sending them lions and all kinds of beasts and destroying it to the point where they went to the Syrian and had the priests, which were the Levites, come and teach them how to keep the laws of the Most High's custom. But they kept it how they wanted to. Keep going. Got one time. Boom, Solomon Nassim, the uh -huh. king of Assyria, mm -hmm. they had a weight captain, mm -hmm. and he carried them over the water. Uh -huh. And so they came to, into another land. Mm -hmm. But they took this castle uh -huh. among themselves. So what happened was that we were seeing how oppressed we was. We was in captivity under these people. And at the same time, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi were going through some things as well. But here we were seeing some things that we didn't like. And we took counsel amongst ourselves. Keep going. Oh God, that they would leave the multitude of the heathen. Right, so we was like, we got to find side of here. Right. This ain't for us. Right, you know, I'm going to give you a modern day example. Who wakes up in the morning, why did they wake up and go to work? No hands went up. Right, you feel that oppression, right? right. So imagine that. That's we were going through something similar to that. Like we didn't want to be around these people. None of us want to be around white folks or the other people. Let's be for real. You know, because we are out of experience with them, we know what they're about, right? right? And then you have these other nations that come over here and treat us like garbage as well. Right. 
But imagine in this in this period we were feeling the same way with the Assyrians. Keep going. Time on time. And go first, uh -huh. go forth into a further country. Uh-huh. Where never man can mankind dwell. See, that's it. This place was called what? Keep going. Time on time. That they might keep their, their statues. So that's the council we took. That we was like, yo, let's get out of here. We go a far land country, nobody lived there. We're gonna keep the Lord's statue and commandments. Which they, uh, I don't know, which they never kept right. in their own land. Yeah, we didn't do it then, and we can't do it now. Keep going. I'm going to show y'all. And they entered into the Euphrates uh -huh. by the narrow path, path places uh -huh. of the river. Go ahead. For the Most High then showed signs of them. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so what he did was that as we passing right through these rivers, we, we, we're going to go into circumference around Africa into what is now known as the Atlantic Ocean, the Lord showed us that way. Keep going. And hell still the flood. Stop right there. Why? Because what they call them, those on currents in the Atlantic Ocean. You ever heard this thing called the trade winds? Why was it called the trade winds? Because the waters is always full. But the Lord held that still. Keep going. Until they were passed over. Until we got over here, keep going. Oh God. For through that country, uh -huh. there were a great way to go. Right, go ahead. Namely, of a year and a half. See, so that, that's what the book, went, that I just read in Spanish. This is a, this is a, a um, way of God. You can drop that now. Oh God. Uh, so, back to here, right? The majority of the archae uh, archaeological sites are started with the Arteroid of found near or on the coast of Tobago has as excuse me or on the coast Tobago has at least one artoid site Martinique has two and Antigua has 24 artoid shell make um uh, million sites all right um so this source right here all you got to do is just type it if you want to type it um just go ahead and type this in and you can go to the Wikipedia which that's you know is one of the places but it give you all the sources they're written up in certain books. More of this information is coming out in modern times. Okay? Now, even, but be careful too, I'm gonna tell you this, because I got some books that are modern that say different things about us. Right? You want to be careful with them books too. Right? Keep going. Um, next, next stop. Right? So just like the Quatana Bay, the Autoways were also hung together, but keep going. I don't know why that image didn't show up, but that image, if you can go back and see if you come back, come back up. Okay, um, just basically, I don't know why this didn't show up like that, but what it should have shown was some sisters in what is now called Bahamas and those islands, just making flatbread out of cassava, okay? Cassava we call yuca, all right? Yuca in the Caribbean. And of course, that word spread out to Central America and other places. All right, keep going, so said the European, it even tells you, Right, depiction of Lucania, um, so to say, Tainos who inhabited what is now the Bahamas, Turks, and Caicos when Columbus arrived, right? So, this is in Fry's view. The small quantity and little substance of food they used, the facility with which they supplied with material wants without labor, the excessive heat of the climate, and the absence of quadrupeds or the exercise of the hunting caused them, he says, to be weak and indolent and averse to labor of all kinds. Anything that was not necessary to satisfy the pangs of hunger, or that did not afford amusement such as he wanted. So this prior, he was making, he was already inventing lies on top of, of, of what, we, what he was actually seeing. Basically, he's doing what Esau always does, which was demonize black and brown people. Right? And he's a Catholic priest, right? He's supposed to be loving Jesus, right? By hunting or fishing was regarded with indifference, neither the hope of reward nor the fear of punishment were tempted to seek the one or to avoid the other. Pride, Inigo admits, however, that there were some expectations among them and say that some of the Indians displayed bravery and strength in the contest with the Spanish soldier, right? So that's what they say then. In modern era, they know now the year we were peaceful people, but 
They know now that we were also a warrior society. This is his opinion then. I'm going to show you all that later on, right? Keep going. So wait, hold on. So then he said, no, no, no. okay, prior and missile clip got to that part. It says, um, uh, bravery in the contest with Spanish soldiers. Their phones were light and free, and there was no cripples among them, right? So on the one thing he's saying we're weak, but then now he's saying, but there is no cripples. Cassave, yuca was a staple food in Taino culture. Uh, culture. Flatbread was made of yuca because it was, it, it would not spoil as quickly as flatbread made of uh, wheat. The reason why they used yuca because they, those of us that are from the Caribbean know um, that region can become moldy, can become very humid, okay? So for the, the flatbread made from yuca, is sustainable. Only thing is that the flatbread from yuca becomes very, very crunchy. You know what I'm saying? So when you make it, you gotta eat it. Uh, the Tainos, as I said, have feasted on 40 varieties of fish, including groper, parrotfish, sturgeon, shark, lobster, oysters, whelk, and crab. Shark, lobsters, oysters, conch, whelk, whelk is like a snail, right? Um, in Puerto Rico, they, those are those, I don't know if whoever's here from the Caribbean, it doesn't matter where you're from, but in Puerto Rico, on the seashore, you have rocks, and the rocks be having these little snails stuck to them. But we would pick them up and prepare them just like how we would prepare octopus. Right? Um, sharks, lobster, oysters, conch, whelk, and crab, of which the Creator told us not to eat, which is, you can go to Levitical Law, I put it there, you want to write it down. The law told us what to eat from the waters and what not to eat. And guess what, people? 2022, in Puerto Rico, we still stuff our face with shark. Still. We still stuff our face with lobsters, but even here, right? And oysters, and conch, and snails, and crab. Still. Okay? And we also eat iguanas. On occasion, we would have turtles. Right? Nasty. Like, <laughs> stay up down. Like, I, I'm glad for the truth because as a kid, they, I tried fried. I ain't gonna lie. I tried some fried legs. It did taste like chicken. They gave me a little bit of turtle. You know, growing up in the in a home full of Tainos, you know, you're gonna eat what was cultural. You know, but my spirit was like, Ugh, you know what I'm saying? And now, if y'all can picture, what does a scorpion look like? A lot of people don't even see the resemblance. Uh, excuse me, I said scorpion, but, but I meant to say lobster because it looks like a scorpion, right? Crabs look like what? Spiders, right? And the shrimp is what? Nothing more than the cockroach right. from the waters, All right? right? <laughs> the other day, I, I, the sister, she was telling me her recipe of shrimp. She was like, mm, I'm gonna make it, I'll make shrimp like this, that, that, that. I said, oh, so you like cockroaches? I, I said, do you like cockroaches? Right. She's like, uh, no, well, guess what? What do you think the shrimp is? She says, for real? I said, yeah, it's for real. Don't believe me, do the research. The scientists know that the shrimp is nothing more than a cockroach from the water. They know it. Anyway, they enjoyed the green part of the crab meat in the shell, which was mixed with lime juice making sauce called the tamaulin, which they ate with cassava bread, right? But besides that, Tainus protein diet consists of small birds such as parrots. We went, we're not supposed to eat parrots, right? Let me clear that up. Um, water birds, right? What, what are water birds? Pelicans, seagulls, right? Ducks, right? And and the likes thereof. We're not supposed to eat none of that either. So if y'all want to write that down too. But we had a diet of iguana, right? To this day, they still make iguana fricassee in 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 Puerto Rico. Do they do it in Trinidad Tobago? You see that? It's a culture thing, right? But. That's what happens when we told, we told, we lied to ourselves and said, let's go to this far land and keep the Lord's essence and commandments. Right. You're right. I mean, I, we said that when we were split up in, 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 the, in the kingdom of Israel, the northern kingdom, we said the same thing and didn't do it. The book of Second Kings will tell you that. Right? Anyway, y'all can write that down. Let me get to the 11th chapter, 13th verse to the 19th verse. Also, we ate iguanas, yellow snakes, and coonies. Anybody know what a coonie is? Go ahead. It's like a rabbit. It's a rabbit. We ate that too. We ate conejito, which is what we call it in Spanish, conejito, right? We make fricassee, you know what I'm saying? Carrots and all that, just like the Bugs Bunny cartoons. We, get, we start eating that. Of course, we were eating some, some
some righteous, you know, right food things, chili peppers is all day good, cassava, sweet potatoes, pumpkin, jampi, which is a fruit, corn, arrow roots, cocoa, guava, star apple, pineapple, and cashew. All right? All these we brought with us in South America. When we lived in the uh, uh, Peruvian part of the Amazon, we brought these up with us. Next slide. All right, so I'm going to say this brief. Nosotros tenemos la costumbre en cuestión de nuestra, nuestro alimento que comíamos iguana, que si culebra amarilla, cotorra, uh, tortugas, cosas de las cuales no debemos comer, con acuerdo lo que dice la ley, pero lo comimos. Y todavía en 2022 todavía comemos eso, cuando no debemos hacer eso. Right? Había peces que se supone que no comían también, como almeja, almendra, almendra, cangreja, langosta, güey, y también tiburón y, y otros peces que no se deben comer, ¿ok? Si no lo sabe, lo único pez que el Señor dijo que podemos comer tiene que tener escama y aleta, right? What I said, the, the only fish that we are allowed to eat as Israelites, of any fish that has skin, scales and fins, it has to have both of those products, right? Other than that, you don't touch it. So they were governed by caciques. Caciques, like I said, are chiefs, right? Um, at the time of um, Ponce de Leon, we had this cacique, he was like the president, and there were other caciques under him, you would call them governors, right? But in the time of Ponce de Leon, he tricked his brother by the name of Guayana, right? Went to the what is now Republica Dominican, uh, Dominican and Haiti. Be, you know, he befriended Guayana Ponce, and we're talking about Ponce de Leon. This is a brief history. Went there and then tricked the brother, enslaved the Tainos and everybody else, and then killed this brother. His brother was named Bana, right? Uh, yeah, um, Bana, the slave became known as Aguaybana El Segundo, or Aguaybana the Second. He was dubbed El Bravo, or the Brave, or El Valiente, or the Valiant, right? Reason why is because he went to war against um, the Spaniards, right? He went to war and they gave him hell. I'm going to show you, I keep saying it, but this, this they, don't, they don't teach every day in Puerto Rico. What I'm about to show you at the end of this, they don't teach in Puerto Rico because they don't want Puerto Rico. And you brothers to know about this history like that. Right. All right? So anyway, they, they were governed by Casillas, who was the eldest son inherited succession. Where's that custom at? Where the eldest son inherited what? Succession, right? In the Bible, right? It's the eldest son. What America teach? That the youngest son get the inheritance. That's not how it works with God. That's not how it works. The Lord can decide to give the inheritance to a second, second born. In this case, Ephraim was chosen over his brother Manasseh, who was the oldest, right? It ain't the first time it has happened, right? Anyway, in the absence of his son, the chief was succeeded by the eldest son of the sister. You will find that in scripture as well, okay? Uh, so, now, uh, so of the sister, there, there might be no doubt as to true descendants, because that's important. Family lineage is important, right? It was important to us here because it was a thing that we brought with us from the old world, from Israel. We brought it here in America. Every last one of us only can go far, um, back so far because America has destroyed every last one of us. Every, everything about your history, all we know is what they teach us. We know, yes, slavery did happen, and you can prove it because of the stuff that's happening to us today, right? It's a cycle, but um, the registry is very important. That's an Israelite custom. That's why here, brothers, when they salute each other for the, during the Sabbath, they salute and they register. Right. And me, when I come up, I'll stand out about the Shabbat, come to Amadim and salute. Ash Aparim ban Aparim ban Yasha Allah. I said, Ash Aparim, son of Ephraim, son of um, um, Israel. That's my register. Those were the prominent ones. They're not the actual. Those are the prominent or the famous ones. The tutelary, right? Uh, just now we're going to talk about the gods, right? This is important. The reason why I'm starting to talk about these gods, and I hope, <laughs> are we live or something? No, we ain't live. But 
we know this is gonna come out online, right? Just make sure y'all put it on TikTok. Cause I got a lot of TikTok pages. But what's what's the what's dad at? What what's what's your brother at? He's somewhere around there? Yeah. Yeah, both of us got got 80 pages. You know what I'm saying? It's straight up and down, and I'm happy about it. Alright? So Tutelary uh, guardian or protectors, because that's what that word means, deity was certainty, right? Or semi, right? Who was made to speak by the Boites. Boites, another way of saying is Boites. What are Boites or Boites? They were nothing more than our shaman or our priests, right? And I have a beef with these guys. I'm going to tell you why, right? Let me keep reading and I'll tell you why. Right? Or medicine men who were at the same time priests. The Boites hid themselves behind the statues of the Sermi and declared war or peace, arranged the seasons, granted sunshine or rain or whatever was required according to the will of the Kasik. Sound familiar? Sound like church, don't it, right? Sound like praise the Lord, hallelujah, Jesus, right? Pass the, back, pass the basket, right? Sound like that, but guess what? He was doing that then. Now you see why we pissing the Lord off. And when we go to church, we pissing the Lord off. They will be continued, right? Um, when the announcements were not fulfilled, the Boethus declared that the Cerny had changed, changed his mind for uh, for wise reasons of his own. Sound like a pimp to me. Without, without, without on this account, says Fry knew the power or credit of the pretend deity. Like even this devil knew that it, we was faking it. And he saw he saw through our. Uh, and he can see that. But did y'all get the point? Yeah, there's a child. That's not true. I'm gonna hold my tongue. Right? So anyway, he saw through all that. Right? The power of the prayer of the Lord, the pretending of the mendacious ministers being doubted, such being the simplicity and the ignorance of the people. Sound like us even to today. Like the people, all he had to do is says the blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus, everybody, right? And we all fall for that nonsense. But the blood of Jesus got us locked up, high on crap. You know what I'm saying? Hating on each other. Gang banging, the blood of Jesus. That's what it do. Next slide. Now, the chiefs then were divided into small provinces, which I explained earlier, which for the most part only comprised the inhabitants of a Uh, uh, we have this upper valley, but all were subject to the head cacique. Like I said, it was like the main dude, right? And then they had under him little chiefs, in other words. Uh, who at the time of the conquest, Agüey, let's say Agüey Nova, which was Agüey went on the first, uh, right? Which was which has been interpreted by the 19th and 20th century officers as meaning the great sun. That sounds familiar too, right? Sounds something like they came out of Egypt as well, right? What was the what was that sun god name? Ra, Ra right? Ra. Ra. He was actually governor in chief. The others being his lieutenants who carried out his orders in the respective districts. Now look how off we was. Let me read this right here. Right, it says men and unmarried women who wore no clothing but painted their bodies abundantly and with such with much skill. Drawing upon them many varieties of figures with the ores, gums, and resin which they extracted from the trees and plants. We were walking half naked everywhere. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like men, men only wore like little cloths hiding the, the front members. Everything else was exposed. You know what I'm saying? We covered ourselves with, with pigment to keep the mosquitoes off, to keep our insects off of us. Right? Um, and, in this uniform, they presented themselves in their military expeditions, public halls, and other assemblies. To be well painted was to be well dressed. That's how. That's how we. The more paint you got, the more fly you look. Difference. Anyway, right? And they learned from experience. Besides the residents, besides that, the residents men the best boys, which they which they painted on their bodies to serve, uh, bodies serve to preserve them from excessive heat and superabundant perspiration. Slide up a little bit. Just a little bit more. Just, uh, just, uh, just, uh, just, uh, 
The paint also serves to protect them from the changes of atmosphere, dampness of climate, and the plague of numerous varieties of mosquitoes and other aces, which, without precaution, consistently annoy them. They wore headdresses made of feathers. We all did. You know, ours was like, like a band and a few feathers here. You know, I know Gat had that long one. You know what I'm saying? Don't be surprised to see me next pass over Roger Wild Bowl. But anyway, <laughs> um, okay. They put small plates of gold in their cheeks and hung shells. Sound, sound familiar? Solomon did the same thing. Solomon did the same thing. He had gold. Right? He said it's from cheek to cheek. He had, he had gold. Right. Anyway, um, um, plates of gold in their cheeks and hung shells. Precious stones and relics from the from their ears and noses and the image of their God certainly was never forget. Of course, just like how we do today. We never forget what I do. The cross. Right? The cross. We don't do that either, right? We're not supposed to put none of that on. The chiefs use a distinctive emblem, a large gold, golden plate worn on their breasts. That sounds familiar too, right? Sounds like a breast a breastplate. Right? Married, a married woman wore an apron which descended to about half their leg, but no clothing was worn on the rest of their body. The wives of the caciques wore their aprons to their ankles, except at the national game of ball, when they also wore short ones. Slide down for a second. I want to touch on this. Stop right there. Now, I know, I know you sisters are so Americanized. I don't like when men have multiple wives, right? Some sisters that rub y'all the wrong way, but hey, us, us Ephraimites and, and, and Manassites and Simeonites that lived in the Caribbean, look what it said about us. And this is a Edomite giving this account about us, right? The men took two, three, or more wives. And guess what? Even in North America, that was a thing, right? Even among Gad, that was a thing, right? According to their ability to support them, the chiefs possessed a larger number of wives than their subjects. But one of them was generally preferred over all others. Okay? Exodus 21 and 10. If a man take another wife, you know the rest. Right? Her raiment and her what? Say that again? So not what? Right? So you clearly see it based off the statement. We're doing that. We were just half doing everything, unfortunately. All right? The woman, besides their domestic duties, had charge of the agricultural uh, pursuits and worked in the fields. Those best loved were buried alive. Now, this clearly was not our culture, but look what it said about what we were doing when somebody died among us. And as I'm reading it, it'll bring some memories if you, if you study, you know what I mean? Those best loved were buried alive with their husbands on his demise. The men did not intermarry with relatives. The first degree, uh, the first degree from a belief that such marriages resulted in a bad death. Right. So that first part, if a man died, they would bury his wife that was alive with him. That comes from where? Egypt. What do you think all those tombs was about? They would put the live people along with the pharaoh and whoever was royalty or whoever could pay to get in there. Why we was doing that here? The Lord told us not to learn the way to eat, but yet we still did it. Right? But the, this other part, right? The men did not intermarry with relatives of the first degree. Does anybody understand that term, the first degree? Go ahead. That means they didn't marry a close. Let's speak of a little bit of a They didn't marry close cousins or first hey, person. Where am I here? Somebody walk away? Oh, right there, so they didn't marry first cousins and, and, and close relatives like, like that. They didn't marry first cousins and close relatives like that. Right. They didn't marry first cousins and close relatives. Right. So you could not marry your own, you know, your own within your own immediate family structure. You know what I'm saying? Second and third cousins. And, and this is like right now we all cousins, all of us, every last one of us. So it's cool if one of us married into tribe. It's cool. But your immediate family, they know that your moms is not going to marry uh, uh, the son-in-law. That was a no-no. The father was not going to marry the daughter-in-law. All that could be found in Leviticus 
to give you the details, 18 chapter 6 verse to the 17 verse. All right? So we, we, at least we did that, right? Their huts were similar in structure and in character to, to those of the North American Indians. Wonder why? Could it be that we was, <laughs> you know, do we trade with each other? Oh, man. Captain Mushak. Give Captain Mushak, man. Hallelujah. <laughs> anyway, um, their huts were similar in structure and they captured the older North American Indian. The hammock was the chief article of the furniture of the Aborigines. Right? That word comes from Amaka. Right? Everybody know what a hammock is, right? That, that word. Right. Come from the word amaka. Right? Um, so their arms, this is dope, right? Their arms were a bow and arrow. Genesis 49 t um, chapter tells us the part about that um, when Esau was attacking with his bullets, I'm paraphrasing, that we would shoot our arrows at them. Right? Uh, okay. Of, uh, uh, in use of which they were very skillful. So we knew how to. We knew how to operate that bow and arrow. The, their canoes, see, I'll tell you earlier, we call it Kawana. Both for fishing and sea voyages. These were hewn out of the timber of enormous trees, the like of which, owing, uh, which, owing to fires and seasons of drought. Drought is not always seen. Drought, okay? No longer exists upon the island. Some of the canoes were large enough to hold 40 or 50 people. Slow down a little bit, over the shark. When the Indians saw that the sick were near the dead, they suffocated them. Um, even the chiefs did not escape. After death, they opened and dried the body by fire and buried it with a, in, in a large cave. That sounds like something that, of course, we did in Egypt. All right? In, in which were in, interred also some desired women, the arms of the deceased and provisions for the journey to the other world. That's an Egyptian custom. Not our custom, but we did here. Uh, stakes and branches of trees were then placed on the top, and the hole was covered with earth, which was thus kept from the bodies of those interred. Okay? Um, they were accustomed to perform a national dance, which was called Arete. Okay? At the conclusion of the dance, all became intoxicated with drinks made by women of fruits, maize, and other ingredients. To this day, we still do that. I mean, even here though, y'all call it moonshine. Y'all heard y'all know what's that, right? We call it añejo, o caña, ron caña, which is homemade, uh, um, homemade spirits. Okay? Um, but here's another thing, and, and with the smoke of tobacco, which they inhaled with their nostrils. That's a no no, but we did. Um, scroll down, Moses Shop. So we'll stop right there. So this is a picture of stop oh, oh. This is our Reto ceremonial dance, okay? We will come to a uh, we will we will have a, a square or a plaza made for ceremonies, all right? Today in Puerto Rico, certain towns, Ayuya, um, Dalcoa, um, other places in, 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 in Puerto Rico that the things exist. I'm a uh, side note. He's all recolonizing. He wants to take these sacred grounds and put town homes on them. You know? Now, I'm, I'm not for all those things, but damn. <laughs> Can we have something? Uh -huh. Right. All right. I mean, history of the Taino religion, scroll up the Bashar. Where the indigenous people who live in the Bahamas and the Caribbean, the Taino, were the first non European. Uh, people encountered by Columbus on his mission to America, the Italian population experienced a genocide at the hand of the Spaniards, with people destroyed by a combination of slave labor, disease, and famine. Right? The transatlantic slave trade started here in the Americas, and then it grew big when they started bringing Judah, Benjamin, Levi, and some of Zebulun, uh, Ze 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 no, Asher, right? Asher, some of Asher was also living over there. Right? Um, 
slave labor, disease, and famine. Though many Caribbean people today have Taino DNA, and a few years ago they did a, a, a test on everybody in the island of Puerto Rico and found out that the majority of people that's alive today are of Taino descent. The majority of us, you know what I mean? Um, and there are no exact lines of cultural descent of the pre Columbian people. Of course not, because why? Slavery, rape, pillage, and plunder. You know what I mean? Not much is known about the Taino religion, however, one Taino myth has been passed down and is still told today. This myth of the cursed creator, which tells the origin of Taino shamans or Paracarpolis, right? which med med mediate between the human world and the world of spirits. The story says that in the beginning, four divine brothers wandered in the celestial realm. One of the brothers called Seminan was afflicted with a painful, painful scab all over his skin. One day the brothers snuck into the garden of the supreme spirit. The brothers found a giant gourd and were trying to peer into it when the gourd split in half. A great flood, next life. That sounds like something that you can go into Greek mythology. You can go to Babylonian um, um, mythology and you can line those things up with one of their gods. Because literally that's what that is. Right? Came from the Lord and swept the brothers away from the celestial realm. The brothers wandered aimlessly in, in this world, um, this new water river. One day they found a house inhabited by an old man called Baya Manakau. The old man claimed to be their grandfather and gave them cassava bread. But then the old man turned in on then we now blow in tobacco, spit onto his skin where the spit landed. When, when the spit landed, his skin became swollen and sore. The skin got more and more swollen until the brothers decided to cut it open to excuse me, cut open the sore. When they did so, a turtle came out of the cut. Now, I've always asked myself, us people who are quote unquote indigenous of the new world, what's up with the turtle? <laughs> For real, like, I'm trying to figure that out. What's up with the turtle? Like the dad calls this turtle island. And here we got this turtle, whatever. You know, I don't even understand where I came from, but I'm gonna find out. You know, I'm gonna find out. Anyway, um, he realized he was able to communicate with the gods. Then we now became the first kind of or uh, Taino's uh, sermon. And that source I got it from this website, called study.com, okay? Right. This is a wooden semi, a statue representing a Taino god. Sound familiar? And there you show what? Other gods of wood and stone. Where's the there? Over here, in the new world. Alright? Now, Taino gods and goddess, goddesses, because Taino culture is entirely decimated along with the Taino people, they were not much known about the Taino mythology. All right, bring it up a little bit. So let me just show the picture of this cat right here. Keep on going, and I'm gonna read you. Stop, just bring it to what? No, come on, come on. Okay, okay. So the Taino's believe in two main gods. Yukahu, who was a god of Kasabi. <laughs> so he was a, he was a Yuka god. Like, what was on our mind? what I'm trying to figure out. What the hell we was making a god of, and it was the god of Kasari, like a god of a, you know, a vegetable, a root, right? And, and that's the, uh, who was the god of Kasari, the god of salt water, and god of agriculture, right? Also written is Yukogwama, Babu, Anahobi, or sometimes Yukau, Yokau, Yokau, or Yukiyu, right? All the same person. Those things that this God did was, was the God of salt or the God of agriculture sound like Baal to me, don't it? Sound like a God called Dagon. You ever heard of those two gods? No, no, no. But this is what he looked like. This is what they said he looked like. He looked almost like a Gazari with a face. Right? The God of creation, the sky, the sea, bountiful harvest, and peace. Now, our creator, right, don't have a mother. He's always big. This God has a mother. Keep going down. Right? 
this time right here. I saw a hey, mother of young. Are you going the goddess of fertility? Sound like, sound familiar? Goddess of fertility. You ever heard of Mary, mother of God? Right. Uh, you ever heard of Asterix? Right? An Ishtar? But we had our own version of Ishtar. Her name was Atare. Right? They also have many other deities such as Bawanex, the goddess of hurricanes, and Maketau, Maketauri, Wayaba, the god, uh, the god of the dead. But the reason why he has Wayaba in the name because that's a fruit. Okay, some people call it guava, but we call it guayaba. Okay, and it was said that not only was he the god of the dead, which also you can find it in Babylon, you can find the god of the dead in, in, in Egypt, in Greece, in Rome, including the Sumerian, Arcadian, Mesopotamian empires. All right? And I make mention of that to show you the stupidity that we were doing. As natives over here. Keep going. Okay. The supreme deity of the Taino religion was Atabe, also known as Atabe, Atabe, or Atabe. Atabe was seen as the creator deity and was the most important god of the Taino people. She was the goddess of the moon. She wasn't just the goddess of fertility, but also of the moon, right? Fertility and fresh water. Her son was the god of, was the god you call who? And she was viewed as the mother of God. Sound familiar? Mary, mother of God. See that? All right. So anyway, this is what Atabe looked like. If you notice, she got frog legs. But if you notice, her legs are open. Because she is the goddess of fertility. All right? If you go look at the image of Ashtoreth, bring it up. I think we got an image of her. Right? Here, it, her, here is a, a glyph of her. Right, keep going. There it is right there. Ishtar, the goddess of fertility. The god, uh, the mother was, hey Captain, what was it that we see in that cemetery called the, the Queen of Heaven? The Queen of Heaven. Right, the different representation of the god of Ishtar or Ashtoreth as called by the Greeks today, the Roman Catholics called it Easter. All right, now. Open up the other PDF now. Time to bomb. It's time to bomb. Oh, go, go. why the Lord allowed Esau to come in and do what he did. You know what I'm saying? Starting here. Right? You got it? It was, it was, it was right in that, um, that, that, um, that same class right. Yeah, it's right in the same class. You seen that? Yes. I think you gotta close this one out first. Alright, so hit that okay button and then they close out the first one. And those are now open that one. Point you can't open. Try this one, I give me that. Try this one right here. No, no, no. This is Taino mythology. Y'all gonna get the first view of all the god idols that we worship in the Caribbean. Bring it down to here. Look at the image, right? It almost looked like one of the the Gadite um, totems, right? Almost, almost the similarities. Go right here. Right? His name was Yaya. 
All right? Yaya is an extreme vital principle, great creator of existence, uh, ancestral agriculturalist, and eminent spirit. He killed his son, Yaya Ed. Almost sound like a bastardized evil word, right? Even Yaya, right? Whom he loved over all things. Sound familiar? What does it sound like? Yeah. Right? But now, you're going to go, take the curveball right here, right? Whom he loved with all, of, of all things before seeing usurped his majesty and in, in, endangered his existence. This brought the Arawax, the benefit of the fish, uh, the immensity of waters of the rivers, seas, and oceans, right? So he killed his son, right? But we, in our stupidity and ignorance and dumbness, right, thought that this was all a blessing. Right? Sounds like Baal to me. And unfortunately, right now, 2022, you have some of my tribe trying to return back to this stupid right here, this stupidity right here, this nonsense right here. Let's get the next one. This is his son. This is his stupid son. Get up. He is the son of Yahya. His name was Yahya El. He underwent exile before assassinating, before he assassinated his own father in a vase made of Wira, uh, placed in the basket in Yahya's hut. He remains. Uh, his remains were conserved, conserved of his bones. The Arawax had the fish and waters. Of his example, the fear of the vital beginning and spirit of revolt. I showed you the stupidity we was doing from pre-Columbus. You know what I'm saying? We were doing a whole mess of other things. Um, in my research also, we were doing drugs on top of that. Like right now in Puerto Rico, I don't know, I don't know if it's like, you know, the other um, um, islands, we have this, this flower called Campanita. It looks like little bells. It said if you take that in the tea, you want to stay on a permanent trip. But we used to take that, go into utter darkness, and start seeing spirits. Next slide. Right? Itiba, Kaubaba. Mother of the four twins, right? Mount not covered with blood, Mother Earth. She gave all her blood, her bridal sap, to give life of her open belly to four twins. Now, it sounded like it's four people, right? Four twins. Now, it was just one being called four twins. Right? His name, and his parents were quite right man over The four twins, right? Itaba Kaubaba passed away in the multitude childbirth of the four twins, implied in the myth of Yahya and his son, Yahya, who gave origin to the humans. We had to be extremely high with this nonsense and witchcraft. Let's go to the next one. Now, like I said, right now, you got dying, people of Taino descent in the island of Puerto Rico trying to return to this. And I start to think, no wonder you saw recolonizing. Because right. we were pissing the Lord off again. Not only did we do piss him off with the Christianity and the nonsense, but we are returning to this. This right here. And I was on TikTok. A brother started talking to me in that language, and I'm like, yes, you know what I said? I said, no. And he said, well, I'm speaking to, uh, Arawai. If you're a real body, well, you, you should know this. And I'm like, who says I should? Who says I should, you know? What I do know is I'm not serving them semis. Yeah, right. That's what I told him. De right? Perdón The principle, the only one name of the four twins, civilizers of the humans, who is called, uh, Sarnoso, the firstborn of the open belly of Itiba Kawaba. His rough and cracked skin, remember what we read earlier? Right? He had, he, he had the cracked skin and the floods came out of him. Right? And then I think in one part the turtle came out of him as well. Right? Rough skin and cracked, uh, cracked skin qualified him as a Karakarakol, word with, the, uh, with which the Arawaks designated those who are born with the malfunction. Okay? The Minang Karakal Kolo unhooked the gourd of the, uh, that contained the remains of Yaya El that hung from the ceiling of Yaya Sut. That act of the Minang Karakal gave the man, gave the men a source of food and waters uh, and the waters of the earth. Thanks to him, the Arabs knew the, uh, the prophet from the secrets of the fire and fabrication of Kasari. I'm telling you, we was off. We was off. You know what I'm saying? None of this, and in, 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 no, in no time, 
if we ever considered in our minds that we should be pray, um, worshiping a, the Creator. Now we knew there was a Creator. That we did know. At one time we knew that there was only one. Right? Um, so, um, thank you. The Arabs knew the prophet of, from the secrets of the fire and the fabrication of the Sabbath. I always remembered how he obtained them from the house of Bayamanako, Mirate, Spirit of Fire. Let's go to the next slide, Bokusha. And that's, and that's, um, um, that's that God that we just read about. Um, no, Salaka. The next God, the next, um, um, that's by our Okay. Right. We're in Pueblo, Puerto Rico. It's called by Amon. Named after that God, right? Here. Right? He's the old, he's the old spirit of the fire. Possessor of the secret of the elaboration of Casabe. Metal constructor, the writer for all about, and the great promoter of the origins of human species. Like, you know, Bayamarco was, was always possessed by the impregnable wrath, the scheming four twins with Deminam Caracalacol in front of, uh, in front, snatched not only the fire and Casabe from Bayamarco, but also the right of Caoba. The Guanguayo, the, the uh, which was spit, he threw from the back, from, on the back of the Deminan Caracol, produced uh, a Guayama. With the Pueblo, similar, with that similar name, still in the in pit. So, hey, Captain, how's your hand, man? Come on, man. In Puerto Rico, there's a town called Guayama also. Um, right after him. That's the, the term, okay? Um, and think, and if you consider, how we were worshiping in Egypt animals, right? Crocodiles, what else? Dogs, cats, turtles, right? And consequently, soon after the mating of Guayama with the twins, the man populated Earth. Guayamaraco is the mythical grandfather of the Arawak people. You're right. You're right. Next slide. So here we got Guayama as the mother of the humans, right? right? Generated from her mating with the four twins. So, like into, into family, uh, you know, in the deity. She rose from the inflamed back of the Minan Caracol after a singular fertilization from the Guayo sent by Bayamanaco, the symbol of Guayama. Simba Guayama marked the beginning of the establishment of the Arawa people in the Arawa Antilles. His meat was part of the diet of the Arawa. Okay. Next slide. There's another guy that we said. So if you could, try to, try to get this image real good. So that way people can see some of this retardedness that we was doing. That was another item. Now go to the next one. Here's the other one. Next slide. Maracoen. He without eyelids. Responsible for the sacred case, person inhabited by men, Sibayawa and Amayauna, the task that was assigned to him by the Arawa people. This is why his image appears in the um, stylomites carved in the near, uh, excuse me, carved near the mouth of the caverns. Makagoel Maka was condemned to keep the entrance of the sacred case for all eternity for being negligent in keeping the humans from leaving the cave only at night without failing to return before sunrise. And the main the main ones that were trying to stay in case were um, the Sibune Indians. They were known for being um Sibune actually mean cave blood in the in the Arawak tongue. Alright? No they weren't Esau. Is that that's what that's what they were named because they lived inside there. Right? Keep going. Alright. Here's another one. Mauti, Ma Mauti Kiwen, son of the dawn, Tasike, of the region of, uh, of the dawn mythical sun born in a cavern, whose symbolism alludes to the cosmic cavern, the, the sun and the moon, 
um, the moon leaf every day to dazzle the earth and to where they return after the pilgrimage through the celestial vault. How many more slides are there? Let's just um, slide up so that way they get to see the names, right? These are all the gods, right? A few more next one. Right? No Baba, right? Kapoa, right? There was a frog. The frog of deity, right? Keep going. This is an amulet that we would wear, right? Something made of shell. Um, while we need, she came from the depths of the, uh, the sea. That's another water water god. Keep going. Of course, Banaro and Kamao, right? It was a dove, a mountain dove. Keep going. And Guatini Tokoro, right? The parrot. Wakamayo, Otoha, Wakamayo, they still use that word today to refer to the parrots in Puerto Rico. Okay, uh, sometimes they'll say Kotoha, but people don't know, they say Wakamayo. Keep going, right? In Lili, right? It's another, it's a woodpecker, because you'll find a lot of them in the, in the Caribbean as well. Okay? Keep going. Of course, back to Atabe. Anyway. Let me get, I'm gonna leave that, right? And now I'm gonna get scripture, right? Give me um Hosea 13 chapter. I'll tell you exactly where I want. Chapter 13 and verse 16. Samaria shall become desolate. Right, so Samaria shall become desolate. What's referring to what? The northern, the northern tribe. Right? Samaria was our capital, like in the southern kingdom was what? Jerusalem shall become desolate. Keep going. For she hath rebelled against her God. Wow. By not keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. By serving other gods, knowing full well that in the scripture it tells us thou shalt have no other god before me, for I am a jealous God, neither you shall have idols, right? No worship that no, I'm paraphrasing. Please are in heaven, on earth, or in the waters. That's right. This is exactly what we did. We did the opposite of what he told us not to do. And that's why we became destined. Keep going. They shall fall by the sword. What? Fall by the sword. What? Fall by the sword. That's 1492 right there, clear. That's right. That's 1492, that's even now, today. Keep going. Their infants shall be dashed into pieces. Right, so you go, you go get these books by, by Talome de la Casa, he give you detail and some illustrations on how the Spaniard would literally take the infants and dash them against the stone. Like I told you earlier, he would take spears and pluck the babies out while the babies were still alive Mother still alive in pain, and while she's looking, seeing that uh, that child that was supposed to be born naturally, been plucked out and fed to the dogs. Keep going. Kind of kind. And their women with child shall be ripped up. See that? That scripture right there. And it happened for real. In addition to that, not only did those things happen. The Spanish had a thing called an encomienda, right? The encomienda was that they would require the, 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 the indigenous of the Caribbean to come up with gold. And if we didn't come up with gold, what they would do? They would start chopping us in pieces as a punishment for not coming up with a cobra. They would literally chop off our nose, chop off our limbs, chop off our legs. They did it so much so that it became a sport to them. They would literally take a child no older than that little girl right there, or that brother right there. One Spaniard would hold the right hand, one Spaniard would hold the left hand, and one would come down the middle, right in front of the parents, and chop that child up. Get the book of the accounts of Bartolome de la Casa. He goes to detail on that. Keep going. That's it on that That's it, right? So that's 1492 right there. That's right. right? Like we, we tell you about the Deuteronomy 28, that's 1492 right there. That happened for real, all because of these things right here. We told the Lord we were going to come here to serve him, we didn't do that. Right. We, we didn't do that. We lied to the Lord. We served other gods. 
And to this day, your brothers, the Tainos, the Manassites, uh, the people of uh, 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 the Simone, want to return to this culture right now. Why? That's going to get us destroyed. In Christianity already, you should see some of the islands. Like, you, you think Chicago is bad. <laughs> go, to, go, go visit sometimes Puerto Rico, but don't go to the, the bad areas. <laughs> don't go to bad areas. You go with somebody that you want to keep you safe before. But yeah, yeah, I think the ghettos over here is terrible. Or in the islands or in, in Central America, South America, it'll be happening some real horror stories. Like, like for instance, I'm gonna throw one at you. Brazil. Brazil has the highest rate of crack and AIDS, but it also has a high crime rate because Esau has them brothers and sisters living in the true hell. You know what I'm saying? Like we're almost then they have building houses on top of each other, no space, and then we're getting paid less while they stay rich. But Esau be up in, in Brazil. It's like one of their their places of wealth. But meanwhile, the Israelites get nothing. That's right. So, at this time, it was a long stretch, right? I, I conclude this uh, um, this lecture for one for every last one of you coming out. Check it out. Hopefully, we get another one going. Hopefully, the next time we start talking about what my father made at the casa, right? I guess on the next one, right? Um, with that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna end it right there. Oh, the water. Go to that first one. I, I said I was gonna give you out there, right? So you see the Spaniards and E from fighting, right? Look at what they have in their hand. This word, this, this stick, which in the Hebrew is called makwal, we call it makana. Makana is the bastardized word, or word for makwal, right? Now, go to the next slide. What do we got here? Where, where, where did we know to do this? Israel, when they went to war, they would carry the Ark of the Covenant. That's right. And you see the, the scripture say we were expert with the bow and arrow as well. Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? Um, there was another, there was an, and this you can actually find in the in, uh, in Museo de Puerto Rico, or, the, or the, the, the Museum of Puerto Rico. This is actually, this actually comes from that. So, yeah, so with that, I'm going to leave that to one for pulling that up. So I did say I wanted to show that. Like, this, 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 this right here is undisputed. Where did we get that from? It's obviously something that we bought over here. You know what I'm saying? That's our version of the Ark of the Covenant. And with that, water, all right, John. <laughs>